Hello and welcome my dear friends. Welcome to another review of a vintage fountain pen. This time I have a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen, a German fountain pen from the late 1930s and the beginning of the 1940s. Actually, I believe that this model that I have was built in the war years in Germany because you will see that it is fitted with a steel nib. Probably you know, during the Second World War, the gold metal was considered a strategic material used for the war effort. So, the fountain pen manufacturers had to adapt to that law and had to find replacement materials for their gold nibs. Speaking about the producer, the producer of this wonderful, wonderful fountain pen is engraved on its barrel and we have here a G.S. Stedler and the model is Mars. Mars was the Roman god of war and it is used as a logo for G.S. Stedler. This logo evolved since the beginning of the company till present days. In our time, Stedler is a well-known German pencil manufacturer and it also makes mechanical pencils. In fact, I have right here this Stedler Mars Micro, which I bought from a recent uh, trip in Italy. You can see the Mars brand is still present and this is the logo of the God of War. Check uh, its review. I will leave a link uh, to its review on the top of the screen, guys. So, this is one of uh, it. Also on my table, I have other fountain pens. This is a Mars Triumph from the same period as this one. And this, I believe, is an export model because it has those beautiful, beautiful colors of the celluloid. But, also, I have uh, this Stedler which is um, interesting, it, it is a newer model, injected plastic in comparison with a celluloid. So I think that this is from the 1960s, unfortunately on this one I don't have its original cap. So they still made uh, fountain pens well into the 1960s, in the 1970s and probably in the 1980s, but in uh, our time they are uh, focused on their pencil and mechanical pencils manufacturing. And interesting guys, I recently bought in my collection this interesting rubber and uh, you use it like this. We have D as, as G.S. Stedler made in Germany. That other logo that is used by them, Luna, you have, you can see a semi-moon, yes, here, and also here. This was a recent acquisition, and uh, I'm quite proud to have it in my collection. So, guys, let's return to our uh, model. So, the clue about its origin, it is engraved on the barrel. 4,290 G.S. Tedler Mars and also present on engraved on the clip we have Mars and this interesting logo over here which um, has the moon you can see the moon and like a crown there it ends in this uh, pointy finish okay it also has two gold plated rings of course here the cap on screws we can see a beautiful beautiful ink window 
and look at this wonderful wonderful steel name on it engraved the luna logo mars and first quality on the back we have this beautiful beautiful ebonite feeder what i love about the design of this fountain pen it is a piston feeder as you can see this is the turning knob on the turning knob we have extra fine so this means we have an extra fine nib and uh, one um, arrow which points to the way you should turn the turning knob but what i love about this design is they've made this you can see this part so it's quite simple to get inside of it to get and just remove the piston this particular model was fitted with a core screw but someone replaced it with a rubber ending you can see right here and what is interesting you can easily clean it so this is the barrel guys and you can easy clean it you can have access to it this is one thing i love about this particular model but also from the models of the pelican the pelican silver on line which i have a few of them right over here so you it is the same principle you can dismantle the nib and have access to this part and clean it very very well so a good and interesting design i did not have the chance to test this pen i know that i bought it relatively quite cheap i think i paid uh, only mm, 200 lays for it so around 40 euros or 40 american dollars and one of the reasons uh, i paid so little for it was the fact that uh, it is fitted with a steel nib but you will see it is a very very interesting nib a uh, very interesting product so it will be the first time that i will feel it i'm not so sure that the core screw will um, create the vacuum uh, to fill it for the ink i think i will use a parker ink which i have right over here but let me leave you the dimensions of this beautiful beautiful gs Stadler mars 4290 fountain pen on the screen and after that i will change the angle of the camera guys and i will do a writing sample to to show you how this wonderful wonderful steel nib uh, works so i will put it right over here now i will change the angle of the camera guys like this I will take the others, I will place them right over here, guys, okay, and I will give it a little shake on the ink bottle, let me unscrew this, I'm quite curious to see if it will um, hold ink, so, like this, guys, I'm turning the turning knob like this, and you should see the end of the piston look okay now let me see if i it will draw ink i'm quite curious this is the first time that i am uh, using this pen okay unfortunately you can see it did not draw the ink Probably is sufficient for my writing sample. Let me get rid of the excess of the ink. I have here a little tissue. I will gently clean it. So definitely it needs uh, a new corkscrew right over there uh, because it doesn't create the right vacuum to draw the ink. But again, I have here my paper and I think I we can write with it. So what do we have here? Let me see. It posts. You can post it. So we have a 
that means it's all monitor a bit. We have a G, G, S. G. S. Stadler fountain pen. The name is um, 4290 Mars. This was made in the early 1940s. Early. Uh, in uh, the, like, like I told you, it is a war, war time production. It is fitted with an extra fine steel nib. Nib. And let me tell you something about this nib, guys. It seems quite, quite flexible. And I will demonstrate that to you. So you can see. It definitely has a little line variance. And uh, we do also the fingernail test. And you probably can see the tines are uh, quite, quite uh, flexible. So, it has... Like I showed you, a little line um, variance. And uh, speaking about the line variance, here no pressure. And here I'm starting to apply pressure. So a little line variance, but also a little flexi flexible nib. This is one thing that I love about the German nibs made out of steel, uh, made in the late 1930s, the 40s, and the early 1950s. They have this little flexiness to them, so it is uh, wonderful. It's uh, quite, quite a nice, nice feeling when I write with it. This uh, particular nib, it scratches a little bit, I didn't, but not in an annoying way, but uh, definitely needs some little tuning so I'm curious to see if we can reverse right with it reverse writing well sort of you can see it loses the ink flow but definitely if uh, normal it writes like an extra fine this is an extra extra fine quite uh, interesting so definitely we can reverse write with it now let me see I think it's quite quite a juicy nib and I will show it to you quite nice being a juicy nib it should do also the signatures quite well yes you can see it does uh, quite nice the signatures now let me tell you about the fox so the Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Quite, quite interesting, guys. Let me tell you, I love the music that Disney does when it writes. The only thing uh, is that uh, it has that scratchy little feeling sometimes, but uh, maybe it is also given by the fact that I don't um, have uh, enough ink flow, so I'm relying only on the ink that was uh, left on the feeder. Maybe let me dip it again in ink and uh, let me write again. So, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Well, definitely, yes, it is a change. It doesn't scratch with that ink flow. So quite, quite a nice looking piece, guys. What can I tell you?
if you find a Stedler Mars with uh, a steel nib or a gold nib, you should uh, buy it because it is a nice example of uh, flexible German quality at a reasonable, reasonable price because you can also find Mont Blancs from the 1930s and 1940s but they have a prohibitive price uh, usually they are all well over 1000 euros and probably you can find this uh, example of a Mars between uh, 100 and 200 euros in a very very nice condition and of course restored to probably with the corkscrew replaced making it uh, a functional piece so this was the review of the GS Stedler 4290 Mars a wartime production fitted with a steel nib tell me what you think guys I'm curious tell me what you think about this wonderful wonderful German fountain pen I want to wish you to have a nice day my dear friends wherever you are i will see you again in the next episode till then bye bye and god bless you all my dear friends